Okay, Joe, let's start with the roll, if you would. Mr. Livingston? Absent. Mr. Naff? Here. Mr. Declawa? Here. Mr. Lennon? Here. Ms. Simaroli? Absent. And Mr. Tolmer? Here. Okay. Uh, we do not, just confirming, Joe, I don't, I, we didn't have minutes from the June meeting. Is that right? Nothing to approve on that <clears> side of things. No, uh, their Cheryl hasn't prepared them yet. So I'll have them for your next meeting. Okay. Okay. Any old business to be discussed tonight? Okay. Moving to new business. Um, the purpose of today's call is to, so just to, to refresh the, the scene for folks who have been in and out of these calls. We've been going over the last couple of months, several planning commission meetings, a process of identifying, first of all, what were some of the bigger ticket items that we wanted to request budget for in the 21, 2021 calendar year. And those concepts boil down to 11 main concepts that were represented by various members of the planning commission over the last several months worth of meetings to generally scope out and give a little bit of detail to what those concepts were. Enough that the, <clears throat> excuse me, the collective planning commission could look at those, those concepts and score them each individually based on metrics of the value, anticipated value to the community on one axis and the other axis being anticipated cost. Um, and I'll, I'll share my screen, Joe, if you don't mind stopping your share. Oh, yeah, you're good. Okay. So if you look to that first tab on the bottom left there. Just for purposes of transparency and insight, um, the six existing planning commission members went through each one of those concepts. A lot of you guys were on those calls and we individually scored each one of those according to the community value and cost. Again, anticipated best guess right now. And then the matrix tab, Joe, if you would flip over to that, gives a feel for how all those things shook out. Uh, you can see a lot of things obviously concentrated on the right hand side of anticipated value. I think it makes sense that we wouldn't spend a whole bunch of time talking about things that didn't have any anticipated value. Upper right would be those high value, high cost items. So leading the charge there, traffic mitigation on the north end and Baldwin Street for sure, just from a cost perspective, are going to be in the nine and 10 range. Uh, bottom below that, then that square is high value, a little bit less cost. So traffic study, pedestrian safety issues, you see the borough cleanup one landed there as well. So everybody has had the opportunity to score those things individually, and they've had the last several weeks following last meeting to look at each other's scores, get a feel for how things shook out collectively across the planning commission. Purpose of tonight's meeting now, we left every, uh, we left last meeting, everybody having the remit to think about what are their top three of the 11 concepts that they would like to put forward for further consideration and formal budget requests. So we're getting to that point now, we're whittling down to collectively as a planning commission, here's the top three priorities that we wanna look for funding for. So with that said, I will share at this point, Joe, because I've got a quick just scoring slide that will facilitate the discussion. If you want to stop your share, I'll grab it. Okay, let me share my screen. Let me know if you guys have my screen now. It's just a simple PowerPoint slide. Do not. I'll stop sharing, so maybe that would help. Okay. There you go. Oh. Good. Yeah, I'll put it in display mode just so you can see it a little bit larger, and then I'll back out to make edits. So very simple scoreboard, right? I'll take the colors from each one of the representatives here and just paste them wherever we decide to place our, our votes for the top three. Uh, because Dale and Justine are not here tonight, they did give me their – uh, scores before this evening. You can see them represented there. So Dale is casting his vote for the traffic study, pedestrian safety issues, and the new comprehensive plan. Justine put her votes in for new comprehensive plan, traffic mitigation on the north end, and traffic studies. I did want to switch over very quickly to uh, Justine did share some some thoughts around why she voted the way that she did, and hopefully in our conversation in this meeting tonight, we'll share some of these verbally, but just so we have a feel for how our, our other peers in the Planning Commission voted. So with respect to the updated comprehensive plan, 
Uh, you can see some of her comments there. I won't read them to you guys verbatim, but I did want to give you a chance to gloss over them and see what she was thinking. Traffic studies was, uh, that was actually hers, and I know we, we heard from her. She's got some passion around the traffic <coughs> study idea. And then the North End, which we did mention, <coughs> was presented by Joe right before he uh, resigned his planning commission to take the borough manager job. Okay, anybody want to spend more time with that or does it give you a good feel for where Justine's coming from? <coughs> Dale just submitted his simply via email, so not a whole lot of uh, additional context to them. Okay, so with that backdrop, I'm going to back out of display mode just so I can put the, the buttons with each one of the votes as we move forward. Let's just go in order if everybody's okay with that as I've got them across the bottom here. So Dick, you'd be up first. If you want to share your top three and whatever reasoning you want to give around that. I can't see the participants at this point, so somebody tell me if Dick is muted. Dick's on the phone. <laughs> Dick's muted. He looks like he's muted. There you go. Okay. Um, I don't have my, I, I'm on my phone and I don't have my list with me, but the first one I think would be the comprehensive plan. Um, and I'm trying to think yeah, in the other orders. I wasn't really planning on being part of your meeting tonight. I was supposed to be out of town. But, I cannot. Um, that's all right, Dick. I've got your scoring sheet up if it helps jog some thoughts. So you had pedestrian safety issues as a value of nine. You had. Yeah, eight. well, that would that would but, be um, right up there with a comprehensive plan. Okay. You've got one left to go. You also had enhanced small town charm as a nine. Parking issues as an eight. Borough cleanup as a nine. Evaluation of existing parcels as a four. The, 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 um, the parking would be the next one. Okay. The comprehensive plan, the parking. And pedestrian safety and, issues. And, and, yeah. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna throw mine out here. My first is the comprehensive plan as well. I shared that when I reviewed that last month that I think it just makes good sense to get some expertise in here and with people who do this work for a living and can essentially do what we attempted to do over the last couple of months with the great additional rigor around that uh, and include some data and analytics around those things. So I, I just think it makes good sense to be leading with that information under our belt. Um, my second one is the compliance and code enforcement. We've talked about that even before we started this process. Uh, the value of having somebody who has the time and can dedicate to uh, enforcing some of the, the codes that we've got in our books. I don't think we lack for good codes. Um, I think we lack a little bit on the implementation side of those things. Uh, and so I would be looking at, we talked about doing that as a shared cost model, if that's the most cost effective approach to that. But I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. And my final one would be the traffic mitigation on the north end. Now that's a huge, huge effort. I'd be interested in thinking about if we can decompose that thing into something that has a multi-year approach, or maybe there are things that we can start this year. So uh, if pressed today, I don't know what I would fill out in that business case for the actual funding that we're requesting, but I think we could get smart about that in the next month or two. Uh, if there's the votes for it with everybody else. All right, Larry. Yeah, so my knee jerk, uh, personally, I'd cast three votes for the new comprehensive plan. Because I think most of what we're talking about here is going to, has to be addressed by the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, some of these items are very long lead items because of their expense. Uh, and frankly, they're going to take a whole lot of thought. And I think a lot of that thought uh, is involved in preparing the comprehensive plan. So you only have room, so just stick two of them in there then. And uh, uh, You can get it in there. That was well within the bounds. We said last time, if you wanted to throw all three, you can throw all three. Tell me if you want me to move it, but don't let space be the prohibitor there. The only other 
I mean, I'm kind of the parking issue, but and again, uh, to me, the parking, the traffic, the pedestrian safety, those all are parts of a comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, and I have a, a little bit of a concern about addressing things sort of in a vacuum outside of the comprehensive plan, because all of these things are completely interconnected. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that, uh, you know, we get the right consultant on board. Uh, and the beauty of, of this exercise, frankly, is if in fact that's the direction we go, we have almost a RFP prepared. These are the issues that are critical to us. Uh, so when we start uh, down the road of hiring a consultant, they know exactly what our concerns are. And, yeah. You know, but and again, I, I tend to think that it all starts with that. And, you know, some of our efforts in the past, uh, I think could have been better than what they were in terms of addressing some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like Baldwin Street. We all know that's a long-term effort. It isn't just Baldwin Street. It's McLaughlin run flooding in general. Uh, and that's going to take a pretty comprehensive uh, look. Uh, land use is a significant part of that. So, yeah, which is always part of a comprehensive plan. <clears throat> okay. What are your, so Larry, one follow-up question to that. I think we talked last time that, you know, that's likely even in itself a, a multi-year, year and a half, two-year effort, that new comprehensive plan. So thoughts about you know, things, things that we could tackle in the interim that won't set us back or cause rework while we're waiting for that to come out. Uh, yeah, the cleanup, I mean, that's an obvious uh, interim thing that probably wouldn't even be addressed by the comprehensive plan in all likelihood. Uh, enhancing the small term town charm. I mean, I don't see that as being something that we couldn't undertake. Yeah. I'm not sure what that effort is comprised of, you know, whether it's a PR kind of a thing or, uh, just to what exactly it is. Uh, I think you're right. There's pieces of that, whether it's, you know, you know landscaping or the things that are, are not going to be running afoul of whatever comes out of a new comprehensive plan. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, those are the kinds of things I think we could easily take on. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if you think in terms of, you know, the planning commission members and the amount of time that any individual member has to devote to any of this. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to get your best, thought and bang for the buck, if you will. You know, I'm thinking that we all focus on the comprehensive plan. I mean, that's, uh, in my mind, that's going to have the most impact on, on pretty much all of these topics. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Mike? Well, since I have three votes, I can, I can like, load up somewhere, can I? No, you I'm can. just kidding. <laughs> I, I just kidding. Hey, Larry did. <laughs> yeah, right. No, um, to, to go along with what Larry said, I mean, the planning commission is, is a roadmap and, you know, it solves other things are wrapped up into that. So, you know, one of my votes is definitely going to go to, to the planning, um, to the comprehensive plan. And then the other one, which, you know, I, to kind of go along with you, Tim, is the code enforcement. You know, it's kind of everything's kind of connected. And I think if you do code enforcement, um, it solves problems. Mm -hmm. that, you know, around town that that might are connected to, to to these types of issues that we're having mm -hmm. on the other topics. So those are the two big ones for me. Um, mm -hmm. If I was going to throw my other one, only because it's near, you know, near and dear is, is um, Baldwin Street because of the flooding and whatnot. Um, but again, you know, a good comprehensive plan is going to be included in that. So, but I will throw, I will throw a, a, a bean in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Just okay. a question, Tim, and it's uh, maybe an issue of confusion on my part, but uh, for instance, the code enforcement, to me, that's an obligation of borough council. Uh, I'm not sure why we on the planning commission should be in a position of telling council, you need a code enforcement officer. I mean, to me, that's, they sh 
that that should be a given and that should be funded because it's an obligation of the council in any case irrespective of what we might think and i agree that it's it's probably something that needs to be done uh you know i know for the longest time uh, the borough manager was a co-enforcement officer, and the reason they did that was so that they could take the monies that were allocated for code enforcement and up the manager's salary, and it tended to make sense, mm -hmm. as long as the manager had the time to do both jobs adequately. And I'm not saying they did or they didn't, you know, it's just that, you know, that was kind of how that played out. It's been, you know, I can't even tell you how long. Dick, maybe you know. How many years has it been since we actually had a, a standalone code enforcement officer? I mean, I'm oh, thinking probably, it's 20 years ago. It, I'm going to say 25. Yeah, that could well be. Okay. So I'm curious if anybody from the council or Joe, I know you're just stepping in day one here, but is that a function of the borough manager um, on paper right now? It's a great question, Larry. I don't know where that resides with, with our borough. Yeah, that's the job of the borough manager here in Bridgeville. And today's okay. day one for me, like you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Joe, that was part of your job description was code enforcement as well. Yes, Larry. Okay. And, it, you know, that's – in a small borough, that can work. And I don't know that we're a small borough, big borough, but, I mean, it, sometimes that's a pretty tall order because, you know, that can get to be quite involved. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of code enforcement issues, that can consume a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I guess I, you know, guess you know, throwing my bean in that pot there is is to have council look at that position and see is it something that you want to have um, Joe do or is it something that you want to pull out and have somebody do as a separate entity? I don't know. A t separate entity. I, I'll tell you what my heart burn. I've seen that many many places over the years. Uh, it tends to be number one very expensive. Mm -hmm. And number two, you end up with people that are you just read the black letter of the law. And, you know, maybe that's what we want. Maybe that's what we not what we want. But, you know, you always have that what I call small town flavor. I mean, you don't want to be cutting people breaks they don't deserve. But at the same time, you don't want to be hammering people, people into the ground over issues. Absolutely. I mean, you have to come at it with some kind of a sensibility. Uh, and, and concern for the local people, I guess, is how I'll characterize it. And if you go outside and hire one of these bigger firms, uh, you know, it, it, that can be very difficult. You lose some degree of control. Sure. And political accountability, if you will. So what's the right way for us? I mean, as much as that's been a, a topic of discussion for, the, you know, over the, the course of the last couple of months, if that in fact is, you know, that budget is sitting with the borough and that rule is with the borough manager, what, what, what's the appropriate step for us from planning commission? Do we just frame that up for council and say, hey, we think there's, you know, a lot to be had here that we've been, you know, missing for the last couple of years. Uh, I, that money is not coming from planning thing. commission. I can share you what my thoughts are, Tim. I mean, I yeah. think at this point, we leave that up to the borough manager and let him decide. I mean, let him get his feet wet. Yeah. See what all the issues are. Uh, let him judge whether or not he feels, you know, four or five, six months down the road that he can continue to do both. <laughs> you know, and at the same time, as you know, there's been a, a fair amount of discussion here in these meetings about things that planning commission members have observed, you know, potential violations. As long as we're keeping Joe appraised of what those are and give him an opportunity to go out and resolve them. I mean, personally, I mean, I don't have any heartburn at all of having the borough manager do both jobs. Mm -hmm. it's a question of, again, are there enough hours in a day or enough hours in a week uh, to do them both justice? And I think, yeah. to me, the jury's out on that. So we've got the luxury of having the borough manager here in this meeting and <laughs> in previous discussions about this topic and he's the one taking the notes. So, um, I mean, as much as we're a small, small town here with, you know, folks that are crossing lines from council to planning commission, I, I would just put that out there. Joe council is something that obviously the planning commission has pointed to as 
we think there's a you know a significant value to moving that needle from where we've come and I think Larry's suggestion is a good one to give a couple of months and get Joe's thoughts on, is that manageable or do we need to look at a, a position? No, I, I think you guys are all spot on. Uh, Larry hits home uh, just because not only uh, I, I live here, so I, the actions I do during the day, I have to sleep with at night <laughs> a little more intimately than other people would. So uh, give me some time and uh, I'll keep you appraised, but uh, I'm very confident that we can make some progress here. So just give me some time. Hey Tim. Right, so, yeah. Stop it. That being said, I'm going to take my uh, bean out of the code enforcement, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put it with pedestrian safety because I'm going to change my vote. Yeah. All right. So there's kind of two two schools of thought here. One is we've obviously all at least passed one vote for the comprehensive plan. And we know that that's going to touch on everything here. Is that our budget request for 2021? And we start to chip away at some of these smaller things that likely don't need a whole lot of funding. Uh, downtown aesthetics, the, the cleanup. Or let what me do this. What was our assessment of pedestrian safety? Can I see that graphic again? The slide for it, you mean? Uh, the rating slide. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the matrix itself. Well, or, I'm sorry, the scorecard. Yep, right here. Uh, no, matrix. There you go. So where is pedestrian safety? Oh, there it is, right there. So it was... High, higher value, lower cost. Okay. And I would agree, it is a higher value, lower cost. Uh, I, I, they're not arguing one way or another. I'm just wondering what exactly it is that the planning commission would do to enhance pedestrian safety. I mean, would we have would we contract for some kind of a pedestrian plan as opposed to a traffic plan? Uh, would we uh, come up individually? Uh, uh, individual board members make recommendations for. You know, safety improvements, crosswalk, signage, whatever. Is that what we're looking at? or? Yeah, so I'm pulling up that actual scope. This was Dale's, but some of the potential solution ideas he's got. Re review of crosswalks, marking and signage for the particular poor sight lines. Increased signage with new high, high visibility for mm -hmm. existing sidewalks. Better or different roadway markings to assist drivers in recognizing crosswalks. That's interesting because I actually screamed at cars on Bank Street the other day after waiting 10 minutes to be able to cross. Um, create a sidewalk maintenance program to identify sidewalks in need of repair. So yeah, it's it's in line with what you were just saying. Okay. I mean, I guess that is something the Planning Commission could do. We wouldn't necessarily need to go to an outside consultant. Although some of the pedestrian marking and signage, Joe, do we need the recommendation from a traffic engineer? Uh, I, mean, I know to, to develop an ordinance and to be able to implement and regulate and enforce, you need those kinds of plans. Is that, is that what we're talking about here? Or are we talking about something a lot less formal than that? Dale's thing was pretty much informal with some just signage, but uh, we're doing ordinances. Uh, my impression is the same as yours. Yeah, if we're going to go to an ordinance, I think you need some kind of professional recommendations, right? You need studies and records. If you go to an ordinance, mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. the intent is to have some ability to enforce. And if people violate, you want to be able to enforce it. And the I guess department. the violation would be, you know, vehicular, right? Or jaywalking, I guess, huh? Yeah, I'm just not sure that I have completely understand this. And that's only because I haven't thought it through, honestly. Mm. I don't either. I mean, I'm sort of leaning towards moving one of mine into pedestrian safety, Tim. I'm just kind of frankly arguing with myself right at the minute. But 
convincing yourself to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, and I, 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 conceptually, I like the idea. I'm just kind of struggling with the implementation of it. Well, new comprehensive plan is locked in, so you can consider it a free vote. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like vote, it. As, as much as that concept picked up sidewalks, which was, I, I think that was a, a comment that I threw in during the review of that and some of the stuff up in the business district with, you know, cones and such. Uh, I can get behind that as well. I, I think that it's a pursuit worth taking on. If I've got a throwaway vote and code and compliance. So you know, driving, driving this exercise to some sort of conclusion, what, what are thoughts from the group on formal RFP budget requests related to new comprehensive plan? Second item there, we can scope out over the next month or two months some of the pedestrian safety issues and think about, is that something we can take on by ourselves? Does that get bigger, depending on that discussion? Table it there at those two things for formal budget requests. I think we can take on, it sounds like there's an interest, I'm not trying to talk anybody into one of my items, but we could take on the borough cleanup as a one-off, kind of it doesn't cost hardly anything. And I think there was some interest in trying to do that within calendar year 2020 as well. Yeah. And that gives us a little bit of a slate of something to, to move forward in the next quarter here. It, I don't, Tim, it's Pat de Blasio here. Um, I don't know where, when you were planning public comment, but you're coming close to making decisions, and I'd certainly like a moment to, again, now I'm in front of a computer so I can see what you're doing, um, but I'd certainly, and I don't know, I think Mr. Fryer's out there, he might also like to make some public comment before you make your decision. Yeah, so a couple things, no decisions being formally made, right, all we're going to do is reach out to council and ask for funding consideration and we'll have i mean by by virtue of these being open forums and, and having a placeholder for open comment before we close the line tonight we'll certainly have that opportunity well and okay <clears throat> okay so going back to what i had just recommended how does that sit with folks What's uh, the rigor around real financial requests related to comprehensive plan and pedestrian safety issues? And then as time and, and energy allows, we can take on. Yeah, comprehensive plan. I mean, that's going to be, I mean, that shouldn't be hard to put a budgetary number to and and uh, ask comp for the pedestrian safety issues. That's going to take a little, we're going to have to figure that and what that's all going to be involved in before we, you know, start asking. Yeah, agree, agree. So, Joe, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, or, or council members. I think if I flip back to the calendar that we had come up with, I think the the requests, Joe, maybe this is you, Reducci. When would you guys need to have that on your desk in order for 2021 planning cycles? Well, normally we start working on budgets or conversations in October. Okay. Sometimes earlier, but I mean, the sooner yeah. the better. Yeah, absolutely. You agree, Joe Carr? I would agree. Okay. All right, so we've got two two months worth of formal meetings as well as time in between to start framing up a little bit of what two looks like. One, I guess, Mike, I'm a little bit more optimistic that, you know, I mean, in quick research, it looked like comprehensive plans and Joe Cowery might be able to keep me honest here, was anywhere from 35 to 55,000 over the course of multiple years. So if we were to budget that at, you know, two years optimistically, we were asking for, you know, 20K. Um, seems like it would I think be, that'd be a good place to start Tim I'm and again I'm just thinking two to three year effort but you're going to need to roll in like the traffic study that's going to have to be a significant piece of that the only question in my mind right now is you know at what time in the development of, the, of a comprehensive plan do we want to be addressing traffic yeah uh, to me that would be you know something that's when we're maybe halfway or, or almost three quarters of the way through and we have some feel for what we're looking at, you know, in land use and, and some of the flooding issues. And then we would want to say, okay, how does traffic impact that or fit into that overall plan? So I'm thinking 
seriously a three-year program, but mm -hmm. have it structured so that it develops in well-defined phases that tend to make sense with the flow of a comprehensive plan. And, you know, it would take us some effort to sit down and write that up uh, come up with a, a phased approach. Uh, but that's kind of what my thoughts are right at the moment. Yeah. And I would think, Larry, too, that's probably part of what we can ask about in an RFP and, you know, presentations as well, right? Here, we've got an interest exactly. in yeah. this up in a logical way. Present us a plan of how you would think about doing that. And that could line us up for, you know, where in that effort would they foresee taking on something like that? That's a, Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, it's uh, the only question, again, in my mind is, you know, if we put together some kind of a uh, skeletonized RFP now and put that on the street, it doesn't cost us any money to have consultants look at that and come in and talk to us. Right. You know, that's that's all, frankly, free services. It's business development for them. Yep. Uh, we could take a couple of months, you know, maybe we tell Joe, hey, Joe, we need 20, 25,000 for next year. <laughs> And we're going to get back to you with exactly what we expect to be able to do in that first year, but at least we have a budget allocation. <clears throat> yeah. You're good, you're good with that, right, Joe? I, it makes sense. And uh, I think it's something that we could get started on an RFP to at least start to dialogue, at least get that rolling along. It makes sense to me. I appreciate that. I was actually looking at the other Joe, and I noticed he's being quiet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, right. <laughs> From uh, leading that effort, is that something that Joe Cower, you would head up and we contribute to, or would you be looking for planning commission to, to write that? I wouldn't expect you guys to write that. Uh, I put a draft together, and if I could get your feedback to help polish it, I, I would hope that that could be done. Yeah, I'm more than willing to, to help you on that, Joe. So. Thank you. All right. Um, so we'll, let's let's go with that plan on the new comprehensive plan. Um, starting to put together a skeleton RFP, putting the feeler out there doing that in a way that allows us to phase and get a feel for what's 21 versus 22, et cetera. Um, on the pedestrian safety issues, unless anybody wants to raise their hand to lead that, I know that that's a particular issue and passion of Dale's. I suspect he would be willing to take that on and start to frame that out. Well, let me ask this, just not getting a free pass to the entire group. Is somebody willing to partner with Dale on framing that out? You know, if Dale need if Dale would like to, I'll be more than happy to work with Dale on that. But I know he's gonna wanna, he's gonna wanna spearhead that. Yeah. And I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm mm -hmm. talking out of school with either. Agree. Okay. Well, thank you, Mike. Okay, that gives us at least a little bit of a north star going into next two months worth of discussions. Um. Any other from the planning commission specific to the scoring exercise, any other questions or thoughts before we open it for comment? I'm good. Okay. Dick, good from your side. Yeah, I'm good. It's just when you get involved in this comprehensive plan, first in selecting who you want to interview, but when you go through the interview processes, um, I think you're looking probably at a five or six month process total. For selection? By, by time, yeah, by the time you get somebody selected. Yeah. It's not yeah, I would simple. agree with that. And, and I think, you know, Larry's comment the last meeting about getting somebody that does this for a living, because the last plan we had, I don't think um, she, was real astute um, with comprehensive plans. I tell you what we're going to struggle with, Dick. There aren't a lot of firms anymore that do planning for a living. And I'm aware yeah, so you, of one. Uh, I don't know if there are any others. Well, you're, you're the one that would be the resource on that. Yeah, I mean, there are some smaller uh, one-horse shops 
Uh, and some of them, and there used to be some really good ones, uh, but the environmental planning and design and, and Pashik might be one. I'm not sure that they're actually a land use planner as much as they are a landscape architect firm, but you know, we, well, I always we need had to fish around and find at least two or three. I was going to say, of all the, the boroughs and townships that we've got relationships with, and I know just from, from looking at, at a couple of others um, who have done things more recently, we could probably put out feelers and get you know recommendations and thoughts from other folks who have recently gone through this, too. Yeah, it might be, Joe, some, yeah, would be Joe Tower, to something you can do is to reach out to other municipalities and find out who they're using. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I could do that. I'd also be able to help because of my contacts that I have at all the different municipalities that are clients of mine. So I'll, I'll reach there too. Great. And, and just to bridge on that, I worked with Pashik in the past on a comp plan, but like you said, it was more about the looks rather than traffic engineering. Right. Right. You know, and it might well be, you know, even like an environmental planning and design, they probably would have to sub out the traffic engineering because I don't know that they have traffic engineers on staff, but they do have the big picture understanding of how that all works together. So, and I'm not pushing them, they're just, just a firm that I happen to know over the years. We're familiar with them already. What's that? They're the ones who worked on Baldwin Street for us. Okay, yeah, right. Pajic was, right? Or EPD? Oh, uh, EPD. Oh, really? Okay. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing. Larry, anything else from your side before we... No, that's it. Okay, thank you. All right, we've got a couple of visitors. Looks like Pat's on the phone right now. Um, Bob, you wanna? No, let, let Pat go first. Okay. Um, comprehensive plan. And I, I realize that it's unanimous. Each one of you put your thought into the comprehensive plan. And so I'm sort of the voice out here, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Here's your comprehensive plan. This plan was done in 2005. Here is your traffic study and parking analysis. Okay? I believe most of the members of the planning commission have the comprehensive plan. It isn't the first comprehensive plan. You've got lots of them. It's a great governmental bureaucratic process. You will get a budget. And then as was pointed out by some really smart people, over the next two to three years, you'll come up with another document. And it will sit on the shelf. My concern with the comprehensive plan isn't the 20 grand that it's gonna cost. My concern is that that will be the focus of the planning commission for the next three years or two or whatever, okay? And at the end of the day, the recommendations in the comprehensive plan may or may not be different than the ones that have been made in the last four, okay? You know, you look at this, and it's interesting to look at the names, okay? Right now on here, okay, the, the, only, the only consistent ones right now are, uh, you know, you've got Colossimo on here. We've got the Blasio, my dad, here. It's just another group trying to come up with a plan. And I don't mind that, but I would look at implementing. Now, you know, you point out pedestrian safety. Great. You've got some people that are going to work on it. The other piece that seems to have some traction is the North End. Maybe you put something in your budget request for actual detailed drawings that can supplant Mike Haberman's drawing on the North End. Maybe you try and get some budgetary money not to, you know, to actually look at areas and, and come up with actual plans to be put forth to be implemented. We have ideas. What we are lacking is specificity and projects. 
And the planning commission should be the home to come up with that specificity in those projects. You talked about, yes, it was environmental planning and design that after a year or two came up with a plan for the Baldwin Street area. Didn't like it, but you haven't moved forward to adjust that plan to something to something more in the planning commission. Council's taken pieces of it and run with it. That's what I was alluding to before the meeting. But the planning commission has not grabbed any piece that, hey, this is our plan or our recommendation to council for what we should do in any of those pieces. Thank you. So, Pat, I got a question in your concept that the planning commission develops a comprehensive plan. Who implements it? Uh, council implements it, but uh, Larry, Thank here's you. the thing that's, about the. Hold, right. on, hold on a second. But I, I understand, but the planning commission has some role in, in, in detailing the plan. Okay, now you have a comprehensive plan that says we're supposed to be looking at traffic. It's in there, okay? The north end, the pedestrian safety, the small town charm, all of those things are in the comprehensive plan. Now, shouldn't the, doesn't the planning commission have a role in the details? Mm -hmm. Don't they implement, don't they come along with recommending to council, here are the details of how we would like to solve the North End? I don't think so. No, I don't agree with that. Okay, so you then, then their role is purely to do a comprehensive plan and walk away? That they don't have a planning role in, you know, well, in the... Uh, I mean, I agree with you. There's very little role for the planning commission. It's a recommending body and it doesn't do it. It doesn't have any, anything else. But I was hoping that, you know, this group of people would actually look to get some, mm -hmm. uh, some details because council's not. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. you know, we can't force council to spend money, obviously. And the detail, the devil's always in the details. You know, and some of these things like a traffic plan, you're going to hire a traffic engineer and they're going to give you the detail. You're not going to come up with that detail. I'm not going to come up with that detail. That's what you hire right. professional consultants for. And either and, and that's what Haber doesn't hire them. Right. And that's what my, my hope was, is that the planning commission would ask council to hire a traffic engineer to work on whatever project the planning commission thought was good. And there seems to be some traction to pedestrian safety and the North end. So my hope is that the planning commission will recommend to council that they budget some money for a traffic engineer and that the home for that could be the planning commission <laughs> so that the traffic engineer would report back to the planning commission to come up with a plan for solving the problem. Excuse me. Can I interrupt Pat and everybody? Sure. Sure, I think uh, excuse I'm done. me. Yeah, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the comprehensive <clears throat> plan. I, I, it's great that everybody understands the importance of focusing in on the comprehensive plan. <clears throat> but you can't wait. <clears throat> excuse me, two or three years before you devise the road network that is going to be part, or, or you envision as being part of the comprehensive plan. The road network in both the central business district and the Baldwin street business district is going to determine, uh, the economic future and stability of the community. It, it, it's going to determine where the central business district and the Baldwin street business district can be redeveloped to attract businesses, to generate, uh, uh, tax revenues. And I might mention, uh, I, from what I've seen, the, the greatest amount of money, the millions that are spent in the various communities seem to be through uh, PennDOT or the county road building people and the roads that they widen and improve and add traffic lights and all that stuff. But how those monies are spent is entirely and not entirely, it's 90% political. I just remember uh, something I read five years ago. They, the, the national study they did on the road building in the country, they said it was like almost all political. The specific fact that I still remember was in 1981, <clears throat> the number of earmarks are the things that the local elected officials take from, you know, a $500 billion 
federal legislation bill and spend it where they want to. That in 1981, there were only 10 earmarks on the federal highway bill. In 2005, that wasn't that long ago, it rose to 6,000. It's and, and the reason that uh, I'm not, uh, I Bridgeville, I think you, you, the Planning Commission, I think you guys are the brains of the community here, no respect, Bill, but now you guys are the leaders and you don't have to be uh, reelected. I think that, excuse me, you should concentrate on developing a comprehensive solution to the traffic problem in Bridgeville, both the North north-south problem and the east-west problem because that way you're going to get and and you've got to get uh it's important that you have some graphics and costs and so on to present the pendant and the county and the spc and everybody else because that's the way you're going to get collier and safet and upper st Clair and scott to support bridgeville's comprehensive road network and it's and it's going to take political force like that for us to get the money. Planning, what, what good is the planning uh, if we never, as Pat mentioned, uh, you've got to develop a plan that will convince the federal, state, and the highway, uh, federal, state, and county uh, uh, accountants that Bridgeville's capable of generating great, a great deal more federal, state, and county tax revenues for them. I, 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 I'm, I'm thrilled that you guys are recognizing the importance of the comprehensive plan, but please uh, focus in on immediately giving uh, Larry, uh, Larry, I thought, I thought Lennon Smith did a lot of uh, road design, or am I wrong? We're not a traffic engineering firm, no. No, oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. I, I I got the impression that you were. Well, that's all right. I mean, I, I agree with you. It's up to uh, the planning commission to run down the to find the people to do it. But I I you know, with a two trillion dollar road bill going through Congress right now, Bridgeville's got to have our plan and the cost of our comprehensive plan right up there, up front. We want to be first in line, and we need to make presentations to those funding agencies that will get us the money that we need. Incidentally, I, I'm not against plan Pat's uh, being interested in the north end improvement or widening, but please don't. You've got to do the whole program, not just the north end program, because if you do that, then the PennDOT and the county will say, "Well, we gave you four million dollars to." Uh, uh, build a wider bridge over the north north end bridge the creek and we did that so we're gonna keep you're gonna have to wait for another 15 years you've got to do a comprehensive plan you will definitely in my opinion get the political support of four different municipalities and you'll be you'll be able to uh, uh, get millions to build the road system that we need very badly yeah, let me just say Thanks. this to all that bob i mean if we're not if you're not on PennDOT and SPC's 12-year plan, you're not going to get consideration. Uh, and, and I know we've had traffic studies over the years. How many of the traffic studies that the borough has undertaken have ended up on SPC's 12-year program? Any well, well let, me, let, me, let me respond to that, Larry. I, I've been surveying the SPC's, that's the Southwestern Pennsylvania Planning Commission's, uh, building schedule for the last 10 years, they have a specific uh, list of probably 50 projects from right. Are we on 10 different list? counties. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I give you, well, the point I'm trying to make is they readjust that list. I'll give you a perfect example. The seven lane bridge over the Creek between um, Bridgeville and Safayette has been put on that list. It, it was moved up. I don't know. It wasn't even on the list. Now it was uh, to be done in two to three years, but that list can change. Don't don't get uh, let's not get overwhelmed or uh, about the, what we're up against. Uh, Bridgeville, we can make 
if we do a comprehensive plan that helps four different communities, all of those communities will help uh, move our project up to the top. Yeah, crap, I think they're the past two or three that I saw, it's interesting. Every year, Upper St. Clair and Mount Lebanon are getting, they're in the top three. <laughs> you know, don't don't get discouraged. I, I have confidence in you guys now with the new leadership and the new engineer. I think we can do great things, but think positive. Your comprehensive plan Everything that we need in the community in terms of roads and parking should be in the comprehensive plan. Don't start thinking about what you're going to have to pay for because you're going to have to pay for them very much because uh, the, the Washington Pike traffic congestion problem, that's PennDOT's responsibility. We've got to remind them and everybody else that it's their responsibility, not Bridgeville's. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Pat. Any other public comment? It looks like maybe Tim might be the only other if, guest tonight. Okay. I'd like I'd like to add one more piece, if I might, Tim. Go ahead. Okay. Multi-municipal comprehensive plan. I, I was just South AF comprehensive plan was adopted in 2013. Call your townships was adopted in 2013. <clears throat> you know, they're supposed to be on a 10 year cycle. A multi municipal comprehensive plan would be a different would be a different approach here that might be very beneficial to the region. Yes, and that's right. One of the things that's lacking in our comprehensive plan that keeps it on the shelf is that the problems that it's trying to solve are regional and doing a multi municipal comprehensive plan with South Fayette and or Collier would possibly get a much better product. Yeah, I think it's an interesting so like, idea. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah, excuse me, I like not to interrupt again, but I want to mention one more fact. South Fayette's comprehensive, when, when Mike Benton, the engineer up at South Fayette, uh, we're work, he and I were working together for several years. We were at four or five years, I guess. At any rate, uh, his he designed a comprehensive plan for Safed. That would be the Washington Pike part. It was to be four lanes from the post office in Bridgeville through the Safed business district all the way up to uh, the Boy Road intersection, two and a half miles away. And what PennDOT did six months ago or 12 months ago is reduce the flow, flow the through traffic lanes through South Ed coming into Bridgeville from four lanes to two. They have violated South Ed's only own comprehensive master plan. And I don't, the officials in South Ed, I don't think you are, are aware of it, but, but primarily I think we're all, I think starting to see the light, we need a comprehensive plan that will help Safed, Bridgeville, Collier, and Upper St. Clair primarily and put together that political mechanism and we will get more money than you can imagine. I am certain of it. I've talked to different people and they've told me that unless Bridgeville com does agrees with such a multi-community, as Pat mentioned, regional solution to the traffic problem, we're, we aren't going to be getting very much of anything. Okay. Yeah, Bob, I'm not sure that that's a topic for a comprehensive plan so much as it is a regional traffic study. And those uh, communities uh, that you mentioned need to get together and address, if, if that's the case, they all need to get together and address, address traffic as a standalone topic. I'm not sure that that's an issue for us as our as our comprehensive plan. I mean, you know, our comprehensive plan is really looking at a whole lot of other things other than just you know, a regional traffic issue. Yeah, Larry, you know the problem. It was the Bridgeville officials, not you guys, but the, the previous Bridgeville officials, when PennDOT wanted to solve the North South traffic congestion problem for. 30 years, Bridgeville officials refused to even discuss the, the point. It's yeah, so it's up to Bridgeville to now to, 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 to the, it's up to Bridgeville now to design it. Then, and, and, and 
and all of the roads, all the regional roads in the area lead to frickin' Bridgeville. We've got to be where the initiative starts for the plan. But then I agree with you, Larry. Once we design a multi-community plan, then we can take it to the other uh, uh, people. And I'm certain uh, that they'll support it. Okay. I appreciate the hey, discussion. Hey, guys, this, this is... The, this is one of the best. This is the best traffic planning commission meeting I've attended in a long time. Congratulations, guys! I really mean <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the discussion, the input. Uh, especially appreciate the effort that went into the last couple of months of thinking through these things uh, on behalf of the planning commission. So, um, with that said, I would take a motion to adjourn. No move. No move. Okay, good night, everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank you.